All right, so Radius Server Authentication is available with external authentication option, this one right here, and for two-factor authentication as well. And these are two different options right there. External authentication means, okay, first I'll tell you what two-factor authentication means. Two-factor authentication means that first you put in your username and password, that is the first authentication, first factor, and then it'll ask you to prove your identity again. That will be the second time you're proving your identity, that will be a two-factor authentication or a multi-factor authentication, right? On the other hand, you have external authentication, which means that as soon as you try your first authentication, which is pushing, uh, mentioning your username and password, it's, it's going to be checked against the Radius server, right? But two-factor authentication, you have only one option available in the ESA, which is the Radius server. I'm not going to touch two-factor authentication uh, in this video. I'm going to touch external authentication, and two-factor authentication uh, works differently than external authentication, obviously. So. Let me show you the config, first of all, for the Radius server that I've done in the external authentication. And apart from that, I'm going to show you the logs as well as to what happens when your Radius server is not reachable, it times out, uh, should you panic or not, and so on. So let, let's just check out the config first and then talk about the rest. Right. And in order to go ahead and configure the Radius settings for it, the external authentication settings, you have to click on this button right here, Edit Global Settings. Okay, let's do it. All right, so as soon as I click on that, this is the page I land on. And uh, first of all, you need to enable the external authentication by ticking on this checkbox. And then you have to select the authentication type as radius. You have other two options available as well, like LDAP and SAML. Right? Here you put the, user, uh, the host name of your radius server. It could be the IP address or the host name. That's completely fine. The port you're using is 1812, which is the default, and the shared secret is something you get from the Radius server. The timeout value is something you can change. So timeout value just means that for how long the ESA is going to try to reach the Radius server. The authentication protocol, uh, you got two options in there. You got PAP and CHAP. Right, so it's completely your choice, whichever one you're using and whichever uh, you're using on the Radius end. Right, so uh, cache timeout, as it says, you got group mapping as well, in which you are basically matching the roles to the attributes. Let me just show you what I mean by that. In the roles, you have all these roles available locally. All right, so this would be the option. Let me just highlight this. So this would be the attribute you're sending from your Radius server, and it is going to match one of the user roles that is already mentioned on the ESA. All right, so these are the user roles. These are the user roles on the ESA, all right? And you're saying whenever your ESA receives this attribute, this attribute from the Radius server, map that user to this role, right? It's not necessary the name should match. It's not necessary to be operator, operator. You can send whatever from that end, uh, from the radius end, but you have to make sure that it maps to the correct one on, on the ESA, right? That's pretty much it. This is uh, literally um, the config you can do on, on, on the ESA for the radius server. Let's take a look at the logs and let me tell you that when your radius server times out, when it is not reachable, you don't have to worry actually because it'll go to the local auth and I can show you that from the logs right now. Okay, let's move to the CLI. Okay, so trying Radius server. So when you try to log into your ESA, your ESA is going to try to reach out to the Radius server. Here you have the IP address of the Radius server or the host name, depending on what you've configured in the configuration section that I showed you right before this, right? You have the Radius server and then again, the IP address of the Radius server or the host name accordingly. Radius server so-and-so communication error, no valid response from the server. And then you have timeout. So it's basically timed out. What happens when your Radius server authentication times out? Well, it gives you the reason right here. At what, what happens really right here? Radius server is timed out. No problem. We got that. Trying local authentication. So that's not a problem. So in my case, what happened was I have this user test operator who I was trying to log in. And I had enabled Radius um, server authentication for this particular 
user or the user role to be more specific. And it timed out, but again, it turned out that it's going to the local authentication. So you should not be worried when something like that happen, happens. But again, this is for external authentication, right? External authentic authentication is different from two-factor authentication. If you have got you know, issues, if your ESA has issues reaching out to the radius server, it's not working fine with the radius server, and you got all those problems in the two-factor authentication, you will not be able to log in. It will not let you log in. So make sure you don't just enable two-factor authentication for administrators and all of that without first confirming what's really going on, if it's going to work well, and so on. Also, let's say you're logged out, your two-factor authentication, you messed up, you, you did not, you know, you didn't realize that, you know, you're going to mess it up, and you did that. Uh, so how to do, how to fix it after that, you just need to go ahead and get uh, serial access to your ESA. From there, it's not going to ask you for the two-factor authentication, and you'll be able to log in and get access back to your ESA. From there, you can, uh, uh, you know, delete the radius or disable the radius um, two-factor authentication for your ESA, and you're done, basically. Yeah, that's it. To sum it up, just to uh, sum it up, for external authentication, if your radius server times out, it will go for local authentication, as shown right here. Well, thank you so much for those of you who are new to the channel. Kindly subscribe. That helps a lot. And uh, yeah, I'll put whatever links I get in the description below. If you have any questions or you want videos on LDAP or I don't know other things, just let me know in the comment section. I'll be very happy to help. You guys have a great day ahead. Goodbye.